Welcome to our paper flick on our recent work published in Cell on ligand-dependent modulation of G-protein conformation alters drug efficacy. We're from the Drug Discovery Biology theme and the Monash Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Cells in our body need to respond to a variety of signals, be they signals from the outside world or signals between cells. Cells do this through a variety of proteins called receptors. Receptors were originally thought to be on-off switches and that the magnitude of response that a cell had to a particular signal was dependent on the number of receptors that were occupied on the cell. The more receptors occupied on the cell, the larger the magnitude of response. Over the last 10 to 15 years, what has become evident is that for the largest family of receptors, the G-protein coupled receptors, which sit on the surface of cells, it is not only the number of receptors that are occupied that dictates the magnitude of response, but it is also the shape that the receptors adopt in response to particular stimuli. So that for stimuli A, for example, the receptor may adopt a different shape compared to stimuli B. These different shapes then allow different amounts of effector protein to be recruited to the receptor, and it's the amount of effector that's recruited to the receptor that dictates the magnitude of cellular response. In our study, what we've shown is that for two different versions of the drug calcitonin, it is not only the receptor that adopts different conformations or shapes, but when two different versions of this drug bind to the receptor, the different shapes of the receptor are transmitted through to the effector. And it is not only the different shape of the receptor, but the different shape of the effector that dictates the magnitude of cellular response. This is important because although you might think that a smaller cellular response is a bad thing, there are examples of drugs which are clinically very effective, even though they have this smaller response. A good example is the opioid analgesic buprenorphine. Unlike other opioid analgesics, it exhibits a ceiling effect because of its low efficacy, which makes it particularly safe in the elderly because it doesn't have the high risk of stopping you breathing. The low efficacy of buprenorphine was a happy accident. Our work provides a molecular understanding for the underlying basis of different efficacies. This provides a platform to rationally design drugs with the desired efficacy and mitigate those on-target side effects. Our work represents a major paradigm shift in how agonist efficacy at GPCRs is viewed. Moving from one control by conformational change at the level of receptor, driving efficiency of effector coupling, to one involving ligand-specific alterations to the conformation of the effector protein. In addition to evolving our understanding of the mechanistic basis for GPCR agonist efficacy, the work also has significant implications for the concept of biased agonism providing additional mechanistic insight into how biased agonism can arise to conformationally driven efficacy change at the level of an individual G protein.